Thank you, Mosea. Thank you so much. And pull this up a little bit. So thank y'all for coming tonight. And I hope y'all have got this book. Every cycle, and I've been, this is my second cycle, but Moselle picks the best books. I didn't think that Pull Matters book could get, we could get a book any better. But How Not to Die by Michael Greger is amazing. And so last week, Stacey Gaines gave us a very solid foundation on building the case for living a healthier life. So Dr. McGregor has given us the research. He has given us examples, not just anecdotes, but core concrete data that we can use to start transforming our lifestyle. And so what I would encourage you to do, if you hadn't already, um, if you hadn't gotten it on Amazon or Audible, as Moselle recommends, I use Scribd. Let me tell you, we're not going to, it's great to try to make this change off of sheer will, but it's also important to know why you're making these changes, because that will help you through this very long journey. This is a journey. And so uh, the information that you're going to read in there is going to challenge all of your long held beliefs about food. And for us, food is very cultural. It brings community. But at the same time, we are learning that many of our folks are dying at the hands of the food that we eat. So I hope you take notes this evening. And for the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna share with you how Dr. McGregor says, you don't have to die. We don't have to die as a result of lung diseases, uh, brain diseases, specifically stroke and Alzheimer's, nor do we have to die from digestive cancers. So let's get into it. Uh, the first one, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually change out my background, and that way y'all could take some, just get the highlights, get the, get the main, uh, the main tips from this particular chapter. So move this way. So we all know, and we've all heard this, we've heard this, 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 this statistic hammered into us for years. I mean, even the court cases played out on national TV against the people versus big tobacco. We are all very clear, and we have known this for decades, that what? Smoking is the primary contributor for lung disease. So the American Lung Association has told us that smoking tobacco and nicotine causes 90% of lung cancer deaths. Plus, Smoking increases the chance of catching cancer 10 to 20 times. Even secondhand smoking can increase your cancer risk by 20 to 30%. And Moselle, I'm, I didn't start my timer, boom. And as well, we know that we can avoid smoking because we can make some dietary choices to help us in that. So things like uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, you probably heard it referred to as COPD and asthma, guess what? We can eat broccoli. We can eat broccoli, which can stave away and reduce the harmful effect of DNA mutations in smokers. So if you are struggling to give up smoking, or if you've got a family member who is struggling to give up smoking, guess what you can encourage them to do? eat more broccoli and you don't have to tell them at the <laughs> you don't have to tell them at the at the Thanksgiving meal how much you know and how well you've been doing ease it into the conversation ease it into the meals just bring broccoli to and drop it off at your uncle's house or your brother-in-law who's still smoking after 40 years all right so those are the two things we want to take away from uh, the lung diseases the next thing we want to talk about is uh, the brain diseases, and we, I'm going to move this way, the brain diseases. Dr. Gregor shares with us how to not die of brain diseases, and I know this is difficult. This is a hard concept to realize because disease is such an acceptable, and sickness is such an acceptable part of our culture, but good people, it's in your book unless you tow it out. That is not our birthright. It is our natural leaning to be healthy. So 
books like this and brain food that we did last cycle, in order for you to really make this stuff stick, you're gonna have to read it over and over again. The word says faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. So just one time looking at this material on Tuesday night is not gonna cut it. If you wanna make some changes in your uh, lifestyle, consider going back to this information. So let's talk about strokes. We all know that strokes are associated with high blood pressure. And the sister two weeks ago, um, oh, what's her name, Dr. She told us that it was an 80-20 rule about strokes and emotions and 20% being physical. Well, guess what? You can control that physical part as well. What Dr. Greger told us is that uh, sirtuin, which is actually suppressed by AGE foods, advanced glycation end products, those are, that's an enzyme that's preventive against strokes, but it is often hampered by meat and dairy products. So I'm sorry to tell y'all that, but there are some things that you can do. You can actually prevent a stroke and this is what you can do. Number one, you can make sure you're sleeping well. If your family members are saying you snore really badly, it might be a good thing to cut out meat and dairy, but to also go to get you a sleep study. Um, to make sure you're not um, not breathing during the day and during the night rather. But seven to eight hours of sleep is optimal. That's the perfect amount of time you need to sleep to avoid a stroke. So I used to be one of those high achievers who was like, oh, I only need four to six hours of sleep. No, ma'am. You need a full seven to eight hours of sleep. Sleeping too little or too much has been associated with an increase in stroke risk. No. Uh, the second thing you see on the list is a fiber rich uh, diet. Fiber rich foods decrease the stroke risk. For every seven grams of fiber you eat, your risk of stroke is reduced by 7%. Isn't that amazing that you know that you can control the way you uh, move day to day with your health? You can also eat, of course, more greens, beans, and sweet potatoes. Potassium, I'm sure those of you who might have been on high blood pressure or know folks that have high blood pressure or have had heart disease, what are they always getting? Sweet potatoes and bananas. Potassium is effective in cutting stroke risk. So your greens, your beans, your sweet potatoes, all are particularly high in potassium. And the research shows us that 1,600 or more milligrams of potassium per day can reduce your stroke risk by 21%. Last thing on that list, you can't see it down there, but that is citrus fruits. Citrus fruits can reduce blood pressure. I remember when my granny uh, was, uh, she was diagnosed with diabetes, but she also had high blood pressure. And after every meal, cause she was a big cook, cooker as the folks say, and she did eat sweets every now and then, but guess what? She would always have a lemon or some lemon water or some lemon tea after a very sweet, rich uh, meal because citrus fruits contain high levels of aspirin, which has been shown to reduce blood pressure and increase blood flow. And that's what you need, that blood flowing and feeling warmer uh, during those cold winters as we are about to approach the winter season. Now, let's talk about the brain disease we all know and have heard of, Alzheimer's. Dr. McGregor, this is a quote I had to say, uh, get it, write it specifically so we could know this. Excess cholesterol in the blood can lead to excess cholesterol in the brain, which may cause or help trigger the clumping of, of amyloid seen in Alzheimer's brains. Under an electron microscope, we can see the clustering of amyloid fibers on and around tiny crystals of cholesterol. So what does that tell us? That Alzheimer's disease is caused by that that plaque that is collecting those deposits in the blood, in the brain. And so uh, what we can start doing is exercise. 90 minutes, if it's moderate to low impact, 45 minutes, if it's high intensity, 
exercise. All of that can improve your cognitive abilities if you've already been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. So you remember Stacy mentioning at the beginning of this book that the things that he shares with you aren't just for folks to prevent these diseases, diseases, but they have data upon data upon research that shows that even when you've been diagnosed with these diseases and maladies, you can actually reverse them. So there is hope. The other thing the research tells us, and I brought this out, you, if you don't remember nothing else tonight, remember that I brought this out. I got this at TJ Maxx about a year ago, and y'all, it is amazing. This is saffron. And it smells so good. I even burn saffron incense in my home. It's a spice. It's about eight bucks. I just love the bottle even. But do you know saffron is the number one leading remedy for Alzheimer's disease and not denopazil? However, this is the leading drug. But you don't hear about that. That's another live, okay? Last but not least, finally, incorporate cranberries, blueberries, strawberries, and even grape juice into your diet. These foods contain polyphenols, which can reduce cognitive decline in the elderly. And in the last two minutes, I'm gonna share with you digestive cancers. I'm gonna bring that up so you can see that. So digestive cancers, again, um, the most significant contributing factor to digestive cancers is the consumption of what? Anybody have a guess? Not all at once. Meat. Meat. <clears throat> Meat. Meat contains hem iron. And human bodies struggle to regulate that kind of iron at those levels, meaning that excess iron can build up. And when excess iron builds up, it consistently has become associated with cancer. Now, I'm going to tell y'all a little note. Again, it's in your book unless you tow it out. Notice when the recorded humans started, stopped rather, living 800, 900, 1,000 years when meat was introduced into their diets. Okay, it's in y'all book unless you tow it out. Additionally, Dr. McGregor explains that animal fat has been consistently correlated with pancreatic cancer. I had a young cousin, she was 27. This has been probably 20 years ago, um, but she was diagnosed as a young mother with pancreatic cancer. The young soul did not live six months. Um, it is it's a terrifyingly quick uh, acting cancer. But what we have found, though, is that a plant-based fat has not been associated, a fat plant-based fat diet has not been associated with pancreatic cancer. So those things, all of those things you've been hearing about in the news about antibiotics and viruses being in chickens is true. And those slaughterhouses, those workers have nine times the risk of pancreatic cancer. So what can we do? Closing out, we can eat more vegetables, berries, apples, and citrus fruits. If you already have esophageal cancer, strawberries could be the best thing to help cure that. Again, just because you have it doesn't mean you cannot reverse it. Inadequate intake of fiber will cause constipation. Constipation builds up mercury in lead because of the toxins. All of that has been associated with cancer. Phytates can be found in seeds and beans, so increase those in your diet. It helps get rid of the free radicals, which cause cancers. Lastly, nuts, seeds, and dried fruits are good sources of good iron. And every day, if you can, put a little bit of turmeric in your uh, regimen, which also reduces the risk of the digestive cancers. And with that, I wanna thank you again, Moselle, for letting me share those chapters back over to you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Nakisha. That was excellent. Well done. And uh, any